Harry S. Truman was born on May 8, 1884 in Missouri, one of three children from his father John Anderson Truman and his mother Martha Ellen Truman. His father was a mule trader and farmer, as was his mother a farmer. He lived with his family in Independence on a family farm, and received his education from Independence High School but did not attend college. He worked many jobs in his city and also abroad the nation. When World War I erupted, he had volunteered regardless of the fact that he was above the age of eligibility, and was accepted in because he organized the National Guard Regiment. He was promoted captain in France, and had earned much respect among his comrades to win a battle known as the Meuse Argonne Campaign. He came back and served two terms as senator, two terms as president, and died on December 26, 1972 at the age of 88. When Harry S. Truman returned from the war as a captain, he returned to Independence, Missouri, and successfully ran in 1922 to be the Jackson County Court Judge. He was not re-elected in 1924, but in 1926 was elected presiding judge of the county court and was re-elected for the same position in 1930. Truman then decided that he wanted to live out his political career in a well-paying position at the county level. He ran during the 1934 senatorial elections and won against the incumbent by up to 20 percentage points. During his first term as Senator of Missouri, he had spoken out against corporate greed and Wall Street speculators, but in turn was ignored by President Roosevelt and had trouble getting calls returned from the White House. He again ran in 1940, but his campaign was weakened as his friend and helper, Henry Guest, was jailed for income tax evasion. He was challenged by Republicans, but still barely beat his adversary by two percentage points. During this term, he had used the powers vested to him to begin investigations into abuses in the military while the nation had been preparing for war. This group of investigators became known as the Truman Committee. Truman was then pulled into the national elections as vice president and had been elected as such in 1945. It wasn't a long vice presidency, because on April 12, 1945, President Roosevelt had died from a stroke. He was then sworn for presidency the next day. It was during his first term that he then wrapped up what Roosevelt had started and won World War II. Just like his second run for senator, he had lost a lot of the credibility among the public, for his approval rating was at 36%. He had to do something in order to get his credibility back, so that is just what he did. He traveled the country visiting everyone he could to get their votes, and issued two executive orders backing civil rights. In the end, he had won with 303 electoral votes against Dewey, who had 189 votes. During the second term, he declared involvement of the U.S. in the Korean War, renovated the White House, and almost had been assassinated. This all until 1953, where his second term has ended. Before Truman had gotten all his governmental positions, he had worked as a timekeeper at the Topeka and Santa Fe Railway, had worked many jobs as a clerk, and worked a little bit of time as a mailman. Then he topped it off with farming before he had went to the military. Throughout all his life, he had gathered tons of experience. Business and salesmanship as a younger man, leadership and cooperation through his military career, and politics and law from his political positions as a judge, senator, and president. All of this is what made Truman the likable, respected president he was. Harry S. Truman's terms, from the standpoint, almost looks like a political disaster, as he had to go through many different events that were extremely difficult to make decisions for. First of all, nearing the beginning of his term, he had to make a decision to bomb Hiroshima and Nagasaki. His reasoning being is that Japan had attacked the Americans first, and that the Japanese would not want to surrender. Germany had already surrendered, ending the Second World War in Europe, but Japan had still remained. Despite the warnings we have given them, they still decided to be persistent and continue the war on their side. It is estimated that more than 200,000 Japanese citizens had lost their lives in these two bombings. Another important decision that he had made was passing the Housing Act of 1949, which had allowed the establishment of a national housing agency that would provide federal aid for low-cost housing projects. In 1950, following the attacks of North Korea on South Korea, 
Truman declared involvement of the U.S. in their war, aiding South Korea with troops from Japan, commanded by General Douglas MacArthur. Also in 1950, Truman signed the Revenue Act, which increased the corporate taxes and income taxes. Lastly, he left with a bang by allowing the detonation of the first hydrogen bomb. All in all, throughout the presentation, we can see that Harry S. Truman had an immense amount of power and had worked in all three branches of the government. From being a judge of a county, to being a senator for Congress, all leading up to being the president of a nation. He had a well-rounded understanding of the nation and how everything worked, and was a wise man. He used his power with good intent, benefiting the nation, rather than with bad and personal intent, benefiting only himself. So, this was the life of Harry S. Truman, born in 1884 to a rather poor family working as a farmer all the way up to a respected president of the United States of America, after which he had lived a peaceful life until his death in 1972. One can imagine how much Truman had to go through in his life, being on the war front himself as a young man, then commanding the deaths of many people to ensure that no one else goes harmed. One can only hope he made these decisions with the people in mind.